Would you like to have a better tool to program your Arduino or ESP boards? More productive? More flexible? But still compatible with all our Arduino sketches and libraries? Also easy to use? Let's have a look if Platform.io is that tool. Grüezi YouTubers, here is the guy with the Swiss accent, with a new episode and fresh ideas around sensors and microcontrollers. Most of us use the Arduino IDE for our projects. Today we will have a look at Platform.io. Because the new versions are much easier to use, it is time for a closer look. In this video we will install Platform.io and Visual Studio Code, the open source editor from Microsoft. Create an Arduino sketch to check if it's more complicated than the Arduino IDE or not. Have a look at code completion, a big time saver. See how real-time syntax check can help us to save time and avoid frustration. See the small things which are different from the Arduino IDE. Use the same code and upload it to different boards like an Arduino Uno and an ESP32. Have a look at the flexible management of libraries and its advantages, especially for larger projects. Discover that more and more projects on GitHub use Platform.io. In the end you should see if it's time to make the step to use Platform.io for your future projects. In video number 240 I asked if it's time to say goodbye to the Arduino IDE and use MicroPython. For most of the commenters, MicroPython was not the right choice. Mainly because it is an interpreted language. They thought C++ is better to program microcontrollers. But quite a few of them suggested leaving the Arduino IDE for platform I.O., which seems to be much more comfortable and still uses C++. Platform I.O. is an open source project which deals with the creation of code for multiple platforms and boards. It has no built-in editor and in the beginning they used Atom. This changed over time and now it seems that Visual Studio Code, also called VSC, is widely accepted. This is why I will use it for this video. As usual, I will use Windows 10, but the tools should also be available on Linux and OS X. Before we start, we have to check if we installed the right version of the Arduino IDE. I suggest you install the newest version. You find it on the Arduino homepage. Do not install the app version, it does not work with Platform IO. Maybe you take the opportunity to donate a little if you did not so already. The installer will ask you if it should remove the old version and installs the new one. It takes a while till the latest version is installed. Now we can go on and install VSC. Just search VSC install and you find this link. Click on the desired version and it downloads an installer. As usual, accept everything and VSC will start. Next, we have to install Platform IO. Because it is very tightly integrated, this step is straightforward. Go to this symbol on the left side in VSC and search for platform-ide. Then hit install. It will take a while till you see the PIO home screen. It also recommends installing additional things. Of course, we install the Arduino framework support. Now we are ready to rumble and can start our first project. I call it Blink Arduino Uno and search for the Arduino Uno board. Here we choose Arduino because we will use the Arduino framework. After pressing finish, you will get this structure on the left side of your screen. On top is the project name and below a few directories. For the moment, we open the src folder and find a file called main.cpp. This is the first difference between platform IO and the Arduino IDE. The main file is always called main.cpp. The extension cpp stands for C++, the programming language of the Arduino IDE. If we open the file, we see our standard structure, setup and loop. 
nothing new, except for the first line. We always have to include Arduino.h. Let's start now with our Blink sketch. I will add a few print statements to test Serial Monitor. As soon as we begin to write Serial.begin, the auto-completion function kicks in. All commands which fit the first letters are offered. If we hit Enter, the complete command is already there. We could also select another version using the up and down arrows. As soon as we enter the opening parenthesis, it shows us the expected variables. Do you remember how often we had to Google this information for commands we do not often use? With VSC, this is a thing of the past. Cool. If we look here, we see that main.cpp is colored red, which means our code still has an error. In this case, it is the missing semicolon at the end of the line. As soon as it is entered, the file becomes white. Like that, we never start to compile or upload code which has such trivial errors. Very nice. With the Arduino IDE, we always lost time until the compiler detected such errors. If we continue typing, we also see that characters like close parentheses are automatically entered. Very productive. We continue with the loop section and set the green LED to low first. When we start to write green, the auto-completion shows us weird things, but not the obvious green LED variable we would expect. Not good. Why? Because we forgot to define it. Another common mistake which steals our time if we discover it too late. As soon as we define green LED, auto-completion works as expected. Another typical source of errors is gone. And with it, also misspelled variable names, including small or large caps. Extremely rewarding. After a few more lines, the program is finished, and we can upload it to our Arduino Uno. This is done by these small icons at the bottom of the screen. We first hit OK to compile our code. The chance it compiles without errors is very high, because we were able to correct all errors before. The display shows similar things as in the Arduino IDE, with verbose switched on. It is well possible that our computer behaves a little different, because Platform I.O. automatically downloads needed components when they are used the first time. We could have uploaded the program directly to our UNO by pressing the right arrow. Let's do it now. After a few seconds, our Arduino starts to blink. But we do not see messages in serial. We first have to select this plug symbol, and we begin to see the messages. By the way, the COM port was automatically selected. Writing this Blink sketch was faster and more fun than with the Arduino IDE, and for sure not more complicated. Let's have a look at what Platform I.O. did in the background. We go back to the home screen and see that it automatically installed the Atmel AVR platform, which is needed to program the UNO. Now we go to an essential place in our directory, the Platform I.O. INI file. Each project has its own file where it stores its settings. Another reason for the power of Platform I.O. Currently, the file in our project folder does not contain a lot of information. Only the three lines for our Arduino Uno. Let's go back to our sketch file and change the serial speed to 19200. After compilation, only gibberish is displayed. In the Arduino IDE, we would have to change the speed of the serial monitor. Here we go back to platform io.ini and add the line monitor underscore speed equals 19200. If we press Ctrl C and start the serial monitor again, the terminal runs at 19200. We can add many things to this ini file. Fortunately, there is documentation available. What happens if we want to create a function? Let's put the serial print, the digital write, and the delay statements in a separate function, 
Like that, the code is better readable. As usual in the Arduino IDE, we add a void function with all the needed parameters at the end of the code. The function has the pin, the delay and the LED status as input parameters. Now we can replace the code in the loop. It looks much cleaner now. But wait, we had the excellent control T function in the Arduino IDE to auto format or pretty print our code. Fortunately, it exists here too. Just press Alt Shift F and your code looks nice. Let's upload the new code and check if it does the same thing as the one before. Unfortunately not. The compiler complains and says that show LED was not declared. This is clearly fake news. As I can prove here, I declared it. Here we have a second difference to the Arduino IDE. We have to move all functions to a place before they are used. In this case, I move it in front of setup. Now it compiles without errors. Let's now create the same project for an ESP32. We name it Blink ESP32 and choose the Espressive Dev Module Board which works for most of my devices. If we hit Finish, we only have to wait till Platform I.O. installed the newest ESP32 support. No more adding of strange JSON files in the Preferences tab of the Arduino IDE. Platform I.O. knows what to do. We get now our second project folder, again with an empty main CPP file. We can copy the Blink sketch from before into this new main.cpp. You see, we still need the Arduino.h file even if we work with an ESP32. Let's quickly go to platform io.ini of this project. It has a different platform and a different board. We also add the monitor speed, but since the ESP32 is fast, we use 115,200. Now let's hit the right arrow and watch what happens. It compiles, automatically detects the new port and uploads the file. The serial monitor displays gibberish until we change the speed in the sketch. And it automatically starts the serial monitor after uploading. Only the LED does not blink. If we change green LED to pin 2, also this LED blinks. We have now two completely separate projects on the same computer. Both projects know for which board they were made and we never again have to think about that. Very good in the days where we have Arduinos, ESP8266 and ESP32 projects. The same way we could create a project for an AT Tiny or an STM32 Blue Pill. Let's continue with the library management. Arduino IDE keeps all libraries in a central place and you have to install it before you compile your code. Sometimes we need a different library for the ESP32 than for the Arduino. And sometimes libraries are even not backward compatible. This is why I prefer to keep the library version which was tested with the project. It also simplifies the distribution of software because the next using your code does not need to hassle with installing the libraries. You also can copy the project to another computer without any problem. Platform IO supports this concept. Let's look at an example file from the JSON Arduino library. I created a project with the name Uno JSON Example and try to compile it. As expected, it does not know the JSON library and generates an error. So we go back to the library manager and search for Arduino JSON. We find a few and chose the common one. We can install it here if we want and we get two options, either global or with our project. But we do not install it right now. We go to the installation tab and see the definition string of our .ini file. We copy it and recompile it. Now we get tons of errors. 
This is because version 6 of the library is not backward compatible. We need a version below 6. To get that, we add this small string and compile again. Now it works. Cool! Our project knows now which library it is based on. If we go back to the library manager, we see that Platform IO automatically installed the two versions of the library. The library files can be distributed with a project. If you download a Platform IO project from GitHub, it contains all libraries and you do not need to install them. As mentioned before, larger projects like Tasmota are more and more developed with Platform IO. Why? Because of the many dependencies they require. What is a dependency? It is a fundamental concept in modern software design. I like this word a lot because it is very precise. The Tasmota code depends on 27 different libraries. Most of us do not have all these libraries installed in our Arduino IDE. You can imagine the nightmare without Platform IO. You would have to install all 27 libraries one after the other. And because each of these libraries gets updated from time to time, our version would be different from the one used by the developers. To prevent that, the authors of Tasmota did a good job and fixed all libraries to a particular version. They tested this project with these libraries, a true quality improvement. Platform IO has another fundamental feature, which is not free of charge, inline debugging. Maybe you will see once a video about that in the future. For now, let's summarize. Platform IO together with Visual Studio Code is an excellent alternative for the Arduino IDE. Automatic code completion as well as error checking before compilation is a productivity booster. More and more of us do not develop only for one board. Platform IO with its encapsulation concept is a perfect solution for that problem. We can use all we have learned with the Arduino IDE. We even can, if we want, import our projects. And our valuable and trusted Arduino libraries also work. The only two things we have to remember is to add include arduino.h at the beginning of all projects and to place the functions before they are called. Because a lot is streamlined now, the effort for the transition between Arduino IDE and Platform IO is minimal. It is also an advantage to know Platform IO because many larger projects are already built using it. It is well possible that I too will start to deliver some of my projects in this way. One last thing. If we look at the .ini file of the Tasmota project, you see the possibilities. Today we only scratched at the surface of these options. I hope this video was useful or at least interesting for you. If true, please consider supporting the channel to secure its future existence. You find the links in the description. Thank you. Bye.